What's that at the... What are those at the bottom, Jan? Do you know? I didn't get to see Are those, them. um... Sea pigs? Sea pigs. Do we want to go look at them? Yeah, can we get a zoom on those? Give me a second. Oh, yeah. They look like pigs. Those are awesome. We saw a whole bunch of those on the really deep dive to Patton Escarpment. I have never seen one before. There you go. My first sea pig. They're just the strangest. I I had never seen one until just like last week. They're just the strangest looking things. Don't they use those appendages? There's a really good video leave? online on the sea pig you should watch. <laughs> and, True and, facts. And, yeah, and yeah, they do kind of walk. I don't even know like what the like what type of animal they are. They're very strange looking. They're related to sea cucumbers, so they're a kind of oh, okay. Yeah, they're actually even related to sand dollars, sea urchins, really? and sea stars. Huh. Yeah. Um, you kind of imagine stretching out a sand dollar from the top and bottom sides, hmm. um, or a sea urchin, you get an elongated yeah. shape. And they're, they're like sort of transparent, so you can see the sediment moving through them. Yep, exactly. And they have modified tube feet, um, similar to sea stars or urchins or sand dollars, um, hmm. that sort of work as a pump system, as a they call it the water vascular system, um, but it's kind of like a hydraulic system. They're pumping water in and out to move um, to move those little legs. Wow. And this is a group of sea pigs, so I like to <laughs> say that it might be an oinkery. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> is that an octopus? It looks like it. It looks like an octopus. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. It is. Look at that. Aww. That's some great color changing going on right there. Mm-hmm. It looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> Stare at us. So the octopus skin is covered in little tiny pigment sacs uh, called chromatophores. And what we're seeing right now is that as the octopus is moving, it's actually opening and closing some of those sacs very quickly and allowing it to change color as well as texture. So we might actually see it um, sort of change the hue, but then also um, sort of pop out little protrusions over its skin in order to better blend in with the seafloor. These deep sea octopus actually burrow into the seafloor, um, sometimes leaving just a little bit of their, their head poking out in order to wait and am ambush something that's coming along, um, but they can also camouflage into rock outcroppings or anemones or whatever else they can find. Oh, looks like there's some... Uh, looks like Hawaiian oh punch. Marine debris. It's Hawaiian punch. Hawaiian punch. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How long... Okay, I got to log that. How long has Hawaiian punch been around? Well, we found a bunch from the 70s we, we, with some really old Pepsi cans before. That one's a recent one, though, it looks like. Hawaiian punch. With that barcode. Yeah, we have lasers, we can scan it. <laughs> yeah. There's another octopus in the back there with a blob sculpin and a crinoids. <laughs> Every shot is like greatest hits. <laughs> crab. And a crab. Oh. It's a very big octopus compared to the other ones we've been seeing. Oh, that's a nice angle on the fish. So an obvious observation for many folks is that, of course, the bottom of the sea is as diverse a landscape sure. as you see in, on the surface. For many, I think we imagine being perhaps more familiar with lakes. Uh, there we go. Yet another That's one good. of those guys. Grandaladoni. And then if we have time, could we pan up to see that bamboo coral right above it, too, and get some images, please? So. Perfect. Thanks. Absolutely beautiful. We're also starting to see more sea stars and more oh, sea cucumbers. Oh, there's a lot of them here. The, wow. Oh, wow, one, two, three, ten big colonies here, at least. Oh, wow. Oh, Dr. Ballard, uh, he called it right, didn't he? He said, strap in. We're about to see more. That's a really large, I think it's bamboo coral. So this is, um, the reason it looks almost fuzzy is because it's got all of the, these polyps out, and those are those feeding tentacles. And all of that marine snow that's going by, this is that is snack food for the coral here. Those little polyps will capture different bits, bring them into their mouths, and then re-extend the polyps out. Great view of each of those polyps surrounding a central mouth. Wonderful. 
What a gorgeous shot. So those polyps grow on the exterior of a skeleton. If you have seen, um, you know, if you think about a coral as a structure, as you think about what is making it stand up there, Corals are animals, although they very often look like plants, but they excrete a hard mineral skeleton. So some people think they are rocks. So they live in this very uh, interesting crossroads that they are actually an animal that is building this rigid, rigid structure. What are we looking at right now? Is it a cell? Ashley, they're oh. asking what we're looking at right we now. Can we zoom in, Bob? Uh, maybe a cell? Ashley's thinking a red siphonophore. A siphonophore, awesome. Siphonophores are colonial organisms, so that is actually a whole collection of individuals if that is a, sign of a siphonophore, except they, they each get a specialized task, so they actually modify their body structures. So there. Some are used for defense, some for locomotion, some for digestion, but it is a colony of individuals. Right, Super cool. Goodbye.